The Brahma Kumaris are an organization working towards world peace um, and one of their main mottos is when we change, the world changes. An appeal being launched in London today asks us not to give any money but a moment's pause. Now on September the 16th, millions of people throughout the world will keep one minute silence for peace. Just one of the events happening for a campaign which is called the Million Minutes of Peace Appeal. And I'm going to be launch at Trafalgar Square I think the significant thing about the One Million Minutes of Peace was it's something everybody could be involved in, and it linked the sense of inner peace with peace in the world. Come on. Come on. Uh, James. This day we are launching uh, the Global Cooperation for a Better World, and uh, events like this, are taking place in many of the capitals of the world. The Brahma Kumaris are so creative, they are constantly coming up with extraordinary and powerful ideas to bring peace. Looking back to the Caribbean event, what we brought was our poetry, our song, 
the stage performance, dance, as a reflection that we share things. Uh, the Brahma Kumaris are doing various things around the world for young people. Um, I think why it's specifically relevant for young people is because um, there are two things I've noticed that are really um, key issues for young people, and that is identity and um, also stress. Welcome. Welcome to our Panto. I was uh, asked to be involved in the pantomimes we used to do every year. And um, one of the amazing things about it was the, the teamwork, the great set of teamwork. The pantomimes were, were free and were well for the community around, uh, around here, but also, um, I mean, around London. People used to come from all over to, to come and watch them because, uh, I mean, they became so famous. We're linking to over 117 countries around the world, 171 cities, and everybody, thousands and thousands of people around the world now are ready to join us here in Wembley Arena for a moment of peace. I was very involved uh, with the concept of JAM, the campaign, just a minute, of how to take minute silence into the workplace, into people's lives. I don't even know how many people, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people in many, many countries across the world. <laughs> The Brum Kumaris are, of course, a group of people who work actually to make sure that people can draw out their own strengths. You don't need to be of a particular religion or gender or anything. They give you the tools to sort of realise your, your own potential, your own spirituality. What's unique about them is they don't ask for a penny. And the reason why they don't ask for a penny is because you can't put a price on values. Through um, Raj Yoga Meditation, uh, each individual changes their way of thinking and um, their way of life. I think the aim of the Brahma Kumaris is to spread hope, just to give people a sense that there is the possibility for real happiness, there is the possibility for real peace, there is the possibility for real freedom. That's it. <laughs>
now in your Bad home look at the glass look, i know looking through it you are able to see everything outside to kya hai bay mukta se sir bay ko dekhne se if you look into a mirror you are able to see your own self apko na dekhne se through extroversion by looking at the external things by not looking inside myself the rubbish of the external world enters me there is either attachment being impressed by someone being dependent on someone or even dislike for someone these things which are outside enter in me inside me inside out ka book the book inside out shows very clearly bar ki baat andar nahi jaave what i need to do in order to keep my heart clean whatever i am peace love and i receive from god purity peace love happiness and power atma the soul draws this from god with introversion and concentration एकाग्रता की शक्ति से खींच रही है वो दे रहा है ही इज गिविंग दिस टू मी आई एम फ्री आई एम फ्री ना आलसन ना लगे लाइए नो लेजीनेस नो केयरलेसनेस आई एम टोटली अलर्ट ले रहे हैं आई एम टेकिंग फ्रॉम हिम देने वाला था तो दे रहा है द बेस्ट ओवर इज गिविंग इट टू मी विचार करो जस्ट थिंक अबाउट इट मतलब विचार बुद्धि से पर दिल से अनुभव करो नॉट जस्ट विद योर इंटेलेक्ट बट एक्सपीरियंस इट विद योर हार्ट अंदर कितना शुद्ध माय हार्ट हैज टू बी सो क्लीन एंड प्योरिटी आई हैव टू हैव ऑनेस्टी खुद के साथ आई हैव टू हैव ऑनेस्टी विद माय सेल्फ एंड विद गॉड the one up above wale ko kuch nahi chahiye he doesn't want anything else maine dekha hai sari life mein in the whole world aaj sare vishwa mein bharat mein hamare 75 platinum jubilee mana rahe hain true and in the whole world we brahma kumaris are Do celebrating the platinum jubilee kya param pita parmatma ne brahma baba ke dwara god taught us through the father brahma bachche children मुखरार देख ले प्राणी लुक एट योर फेस इनसाइड द मिरर ऑफ योर हार्ट अपने दर्पण में कीप योर मिरर क्लीन अपने दर्पण को साफ रखो व्हाट सिन एंड व्हाट चैरिटी डू आई परफॉर्म मैंने क्या पाप किया है आई मस्ट नॉट कमिट एनी सिन नाउ बट अक्यूमुलेट इन द अकाउंट ऑफ चैरिटी कंटिन्यू टू परफॉर्म चैरिटेबल एक्शंस दिस इज द टाइम टू अक्यूमुलेट चैरिटी बाय परफॉर्मिंग एलिवेटेड एक्शंस नॉट ओनली डू आई कम do i create a beautiful future for myself but the whole world also becomes so beautiful when i keep this aim and dunya mein bhavishya itni sundar ban jave ye lakshya rakhne se this is the aim that i should have lakshya data ba the father the best over of this aim makes me the embodiment of that kehta hai jo orte so arjan He says that those who take the initiative are Arjuna. तुमको करना है कर ले. Do whatever you want to do. समय कह रहा है कर ले. Time is saying do this. बाकी से मैं करा रहा हूँ. The father says I'm inspiring you समय to do this. समय कह रहा है तू कर ले. The father says. जैसे मुझे प्रेरित रहा है समय. I'm making you to do it. बाकी से मैं करा रहा हूँ. मुझे क्या करने का है? He is teaching me yes. what I have to do, and I receive. a lot of power samadhi jitna hum abhi is sadhan ke dwara bhi hum aap se mil rahi hu i'm meeting you now through the facilities of science sadhana gupta spiritual endeavor is incognito gupta parmatma se mili hui cheez in the facilities are enabling me to give others the experience of what i have received from god science wale bhi kamal ka kar sakte scientists also perform wonders through silence nahi lao 
and God says, go into silence, go deep inside. Matter the facilities and those who use the facilities should receive the power of truth. You will receive that in silence. When the heart is honest, the heart is big, strong, feelings pure, and the feelings are pure, filled with good wishes for everyone, no matter what they are like. I do not have any desires, but I only have good wishes that everyone should benefit. My heart says, God, thank you. God has given me the recognition of time the self and of himself who gave me that that one who is the almighty authority always make the almighty authority father belong to you draw the power of all relationships from him and become complete and perfect. I should not have any defects in me. This is a time to become that. You become that and I will make you that. Simply value your time. Let your thoughts be elevated. Let there be God in your thoughts and no one else. Thoughts of the self and thoughts of God. Experience this and see for yourself. Your heart will be happy, your head will be cool, your nature will be cool, and you will have a natural life. Is it possible? Happy heart and cool head. Your pressure will never be high. Nor will it ever be low. If someone gets angry, then in that case, the one who gets angry, their pressure rises, and the one at whom I became angry, their pressure would become low. No, never let there be any pressure on your head. Remain active. An actor means to be active, perform such an act that you become a hero actor. The father is the zero, a tiny dot, and that one is the ocean of knowledge, ocean of love, ocean of peace, ocean of bliss, the almighty authority, the purifier, and I'm his child. So it's easy, isn't it? Your heart is now healed. Whatever was in your heart is now healed, is it not? What is everyone's heart like? Wah, how wonderful. You've now become free from why. We used to ask why. And so now, at every step, we say, wow, 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 how wonderful, how wonderful. We say, you are very good, God. And then God says, you are very good, my child. Become my true and honest child. Become sweet. That will be very good. Become honest, become sweet, like the one out of hundreds and thousands. 
but the soul, I the soul, I am alone. So, <clears throat> I'd like to just give a little bit more introduction to Sadesh Didi, who, as I said, has flown over from Europe, especially to be with us tonight. And coming down in the car with her, I, I, I had to ask her twice because she said, I've, I've been traveling in 63 countries in the last two years. Um, so you'll get an idea of how experienced she is. As I said, she's one of the Brahma Kumaris leading international lecturers. Uh, she's a broadcaster on spirituality and meditation. Uh, she's based in Frankfurt, but travels across the world. Um, I've known her a long time, and I know her as someone who is extremely wise, extremely insightful, um, and also has the ability to convey her words through vibrations and feelings. Um, so I'm really looking forward to see how she shares and what she shares with us tonight. Um, she'll be in conversation with Neville Hodgkinson, and um, I can't think of anyone better to be in conversation with the theme of tonight. Neville um, is an author and journalist. He's been um, worked for many national newspapers uh, as a medical and science correspondent. And some years back, when the theme of the connection between the mind and body and emotions wasn't so much talked about, uh, he wrote a very uh, interesting book, The Will to Be Well, which connected um, the mind and the feelings, and particularly the effect of happiness on, on health. And also, he's chairman of the Janke Foundation um, for Global Healthcare, which is a charity which is looking at the relationship between health and spirituality. And he's based at the Brahma Kumaris Retreat Center in Oxford. So if I invite you onto the stage, Neville and Didi. Good evening, everyone. Many thanks to David for his words of welcome. And, of course, that beautiful message from Daddy Janke, such a wonderful, essenceful, powerful message about hearts and minds. And a big thank you to Catherine for being with us. She's going to be returning to the harp, leading us in some meditations interspersing this evening. When I saw Dee Dee sharing silence with the gathering here, it reminded me of when I first met her some 30 years back. And at the time, I was in the middle of my career as a journalist and previously had been quite stressed by the ups and downs of the media work. 
And um, I remember that when I was coming into these gatherings and these sisters were talking about things like the soul and the supreme being that you could connect with, it had very little meaning for me. I was working as a science writer, which is a very materialistic outlook that I had at that time. But Dee Dee used to conduct these meditations where she would come to little gatherings and would sit for about an hour, as she was then for a minute or two, she would sit for about an hour with her eyes open, looking at us, just sharing some kind of inner joy. And it penetrated the sort of wall of hurt and hardness that was around my heart and was the beginning of a whole new phase of my life. So it's a terrific pleasure to be with Dee Dee this evening and to be, to be in conversation with her on this theme. Dee Dee, when Daddy Janky was speaking just now, she was suggesting that the heart heals when it understands silence, when it understands the inner being and some source that it can connect to. But so many of us in today's world are suffering, carrying burdens in the heart and hurts. We know this expression, the broken heart. Many people feel as if their hearts are broken. So what has happened to bring this about and can it really be so straightforward that we free ourselves from those burdens? Good evening. Om Shanti. And now answer to the question, of course, we are healers of our hearts and we ourselves have created that burden. Truly when I do not want that, everybody says, I don't want pain. I don't want suffering. I want to keep my heart happy. What is on the contrary? We need to... It is very easy, it's possible, it's sure and certain. When you diagnose the cause of suffering, just like other doctors. Once they have diagnosed their disease, the right way of healing begins. In the same way, we have to check what it is that brings that pain, hurts our hearts, or breaks it into pieces. Which heart is it? Which heart, when we say healing of the heart, where is it? Where is this heart sitting? Can you point where is the heart sitting? Whenever we touch, we say here, where you touch your heart here. Your heart is sitting here. Sure? Heart is sitting here? Those who say my heart is here, can you raise your hand as well? Your heart is here. Your heart is here, okay. Okay. Is this your heart or part of your body? Your heart, when I say your heart, or an instrument part of your body? This heart can be healed by doctors with medicine, whichever medicine can work. This heart, the physical heart, does it feel really that uh, I am hurt? Is this physical heart can feel hurt? Even it is damaged, it is, it is in a state of pain, 
and heart attack. Does the heart know that there is heart attack? So first we need to understand, we feel the pulse, where is this pain? You are expressing and experiencing, feeling pain here in the heart. But is the pain feeling? Pain is there, of course. Feelings are there? Pain is there, this is true. Are the feelings there? Who is feeling? Feelings are in the mind. And the feelings in the mind are now being expressed through here, which is the heart, the part of my body. So if I want to heal the pain, I take medicine. Doctor will give you some medicine. But when we are speaking about the healing of the hearts, we are speaking of the feelings of the mind, which is known as suffering. There is a difference between pain and suffering. The suffering pain, pain which, is, which makes us suffer, then which has an effect on our heart, it is after is it the effect of suffering, some kind of tension, fear, jealousy, competition, inferiority complex. Like many, it's not only just because of anger our heart is affected. It's a, the, the feelings of the mind is the heart of the soul. The dead body also has a heart. In dead body, has the heart gone away from the dead body when the person leaves the body? Heart is still there. Is the feeling in the heart at that time? Brain is there in the dead body. Is there understanding and discrimination between good and bad at that time in the body? So just like brain is part of the body, in the same way the heart is also an instrument of the body. With eyes I see, but eyes don't see. I see through the eyes, it has the capacity to see. But then what I see and how I see, eyes do not know. The glass is here, I put water in it, yes. I take water away and put juice in it. Glass does not know it is juice or it is water, but it will have an impact if I put something wrong, mud in it, it will become of course muddy. I put something very acid thing, it will have and have stains on it. So what we put in our mind, We say, this person said such a bad thing. Nidadi said that we, when we look at others, when we are watching outside, it's just like bringing the rubbish inside. And we don't realize that how much rubbish we collect in a very subtle way by four different entries through the eyes. These windows immediately take the dust through the ears, the ventilators, no? This body, <laughs> these are ventilators, these are windows, this is door, opens and closes. <laughs> Sensations, <laughs> feelings. <laughs> so it is, it's, we are absorbing it. And somebody else had some, said something and it was really, really very bad. It did hurt. 
And we are keeping this rubbish for years and years. And what we say? What this person said to me in front of so many people, it was rubbish, it was totally wrong. When was it? 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Do I have respect and love for myself, my heart? 20 years ago, rubbish was there, and I'm keeping this rubbish inside. Certainly it will become a disease. You dustbin, you teach to clean your dustbin every day. Dustbin is the heaviest, nothing is there, only rubbish, but very heavy. And we, I have a very heavy heart, because I've collected rubbish. I don't like it, and I keep it bare, hidden in my heart. <laughs> so where this pain came from? It's not recognizing what is harmful for me and what is beneficial for me. What makes me happy? What makes, makes me sad? Not only sad, but makes me mad. <laughs> then there's so much reaction to that, jealousy, hatred, reactions, rejections, competition. All these are just like, we are, we are not aware that I have collected all these kind of feelings in me. And so, understanding is most important. Where it is coming from? It, it seems as if more people are carrying more inside their hearts these days than yes. used to be the case. Yes. Would you say that's probably true? Something we pick up that people feel quite empty and hurt, they're going around in this way. Mm -hmm. So what is the, what's the solution? Because it seems to make so much sense what you're saying, that we should clean out this rubbish, but somehow we don't seem to have the strength to do that. Yeah, there is not the courage actually. One needs to have also courage. Is it this, that they, this knowledge is there that yes, this is this painful, we are blaming others who has caused this pain. And then, there's not that power to let go. In other words, there's not that much courage or real feeling of forgiving others, of forgiving myself because we don't let go. And heart is not actually healed, because it is pain, is because I'm, I'm not really caring of myself. Love, is like a heart is always connected with love. And love, we put this picture, this, put this symbol, is this love? I love my heart, car. I love my car. I love a coffee, <laughs> a cup of coffee. <laughs> so what it means, even understanding is changed. So it means I need to have the power to let go, forgive myself. Let us have this kind of feeling. I forgive myself, I forgive others. I heal myself. Om. Om. I become aware of the cause, cause of my suffering. of my pain. Of my pressure. I realize I have taken the things 
which do not belong to me. I am not only mind, not only pure feelings created in my heart, the mind, I am along with a thinking being, a being with the feelings, I am a living being who has the understanding. the intellect. The power to understand what is wrong, what is right. The power to discriminate between right and wrong and decide what I want to do. It's my choice. What I have chosen. is wrongs of myself. And done wrongs by others. Have hurt my heart. But now. Do I want to hurt it more by bringing these feelings again and again? Maybe someone had said only once by mistake, by wrong impressions, or due to misunderstanding. It was like a knife which cut my feelings, my heart. By repeating it again and again, speaking it again and again to others. If I repeat the same feelings hundred times, I deepening my wound and expecting it will be healed. I have to be conscious of the consequence. Use my intellect in the right way. I don't want to take sorrow anymore. I love my happiness. I love my peace. I sustain it. I take care of it. I protect my happiness. It's my property. It's my wealth. No one can take it away. I am a loving being. I love to maintain pure feelings, good feelings, my well-being of the heart, is having good wishes for myself and others.
Oh, Dee Dee, you've explained very logically that the hurt in our hearts is actually coming from our minds. Mm. And that really our minds have this quality of peace and love, mm. even though we might not actually be experiencing it at the moment. We've these things that we hold on to sometimes for years. Mm. So what's gone wrong that we we hold on to those things like that and how can we heal the mind if the mind is the root of the hurts in the heart how do we heal the mind by maintaining our self respect it was the feeling that my respect is gone others insult me did not value what i said I give so much time to my children. I'm total dedicated and loyal to my husband. I'm working all the time, day and night. I don't care about my health. And no one values it. They criticize me. And so here, there's a, some kind of inner expectations which are not fulfilled. I give. I want to get some re return, but love means to give. I have forgotten the quality of love, the property of the love, the real meaning of selfless giving. The, it is possible only when love is not in the physical heart, love is not in the physical body, because I'm mother, so I give love, because I'm wife, I'm husband, so I am also faithful to my wife. It is in the soul, the living being, the living energy. And when I am not conscious of the self, I'm not able to express in the right way. But I'm conscious, I'm so loving, I'm so giving, I'm so caring, I'm so active, I'm attentive, I'm skilled. We are aware, acquired qualities, which in this body, in action, in relationship, I have acquired. But I'm not aware, these, what our skills, specialities, um, clarity, or um, cleverness, or whatever, or wisdom, which I call it wisdom, it is because of I, the soul, am here in this body and playing this part and relationship with each other. So when I'm not soul conscious, then this mixture is taking place. Now, this purity which was in, in me still has that quality because I am me, a pure energy, a peaceful being, a metaphysical being, a living being. And it has these qualities of natural, innate qualities of love, of wisdom, of purity, of peace, of bliss, of truth, of benevolence, of mercy, of cooperation, of consideration, because it's the living energy. Abstract qualities are there. So when I became body conscious, so this now more is mixture of the matter, the outer things in me. And my purity, I just use this glass water again. This is clean water. It's like I can see my face, my hand in it. It's so clean, I drink, it's healthy. Now the same water, I put a little bit dust in it. It's not water anymore, healthy water, it's water. But it is dirty water. It's not healthy water. A little bit more dust is mixed in it. Now another quality is changed. This water can clean my cloth. Now it is making my cloth dirty, stains on it. Instead of cleaning it, does have the other effect. It's not cleaning, it is making dirty. The third quality is it's a flow in it. Now more dust is mixed in it. It has become mud. It's not water anymore. 
It's mud, but it has water. So I, the soul, am a soul, but I'm not conscious of, I'm not, as not being soul conscious, I am expressing this quality with the mixture of desires, by mixture of possessiveness, by mixture, this love now is changed into attachment. You're like a water changed into mud. Effect is changed. In the same way, this quality of love of soul consciousness is still love. It is called love, but it is not love. It becomes possessiveness. And then it creates fear of losing something. This fear creates tension because it's insecurity. This love had created security, this love was relationship, this world was my honor. So what I thought it was giving me good, it is still quality of love is pure, love is good. But because it's a mixture of body consciousness, soul is not conscious, it cannot communicate the original qualities with others. It's communicating but cannot, it does not reach others. Just like somebody is unconscious, it's still the, all the qualities that in the soul is, is his specialities, his character, her love is still in that soul in part is part of personality. But it's no communication. In the same way, when I'm soul conscious, then they function. When I'm not soul conscious, there's functioning with the mixture. An effect is also different. And result is that I suffer after that. So love is changed with attachment. And then attachment is there, the result of that is because it's my desire, my attachment, and it is not done according to my desire or my wish. Same children whom I love very much, husband I respect very much, my friends, I, I, I trust them very much. I become angry. So attachment creates anger then. Mm. Dee Dee, you've explained that beautifully. And this image of the, the water that is clean but adds some dust, it's not drinkable, add more and it becomes mud. But supposing that's the condition that we're in now, we've got this mud instead of the clear water. What's the method to remove the dirt? So again, this, as I was saying, by reminding myself of my true identity and my true self-respect. No one can take away my respect and no one can give actually love to me unless I love myself. So it means self-respect. When, when we have had this wrong feeling that other people have insulted me, at that time, I am also not using the right knowledge. I have to now understand that, okay, if somebody had something wrong, and I know it is wrong, why should I believe that? I know it was false, so I believe that. I begin to think that they are thinking. I have to be honest. As Dadi said, with honest heart, God is pleased. But with honest heart, we also are pleased. With honest heart, others are also pleased. Then I am able to check if what this person has said, with what consciousness, with what situation, with what impressions, with what background. Then you become a detached observer and you don't take it personal attack. So in this way you are able to, if you, uh, our cell has become a pain, I cannot remove it. I have to make it as an observer and then I can see from the entry, the influence, mm. then I can remove it. Mm. If I myself have become pain, I can remove it. And I have become body, I cannot, the body conscious cannot remove that. They can help, no, cannot help me either. Mm. So when this pain is experienced, Rather than allowing the heart to become burdened, you'd actually take this as a signal mm. that there's something to check inside yourself. It means yes. that there's some muddiness to be removed. And I have to learn something from that. Right. 
why I am taking this situation comes again and again, that with an honesty, I have not learned it. And that problem will come again. Not in the same, from the same person, perhaps it will come from other person. It's an, a signal to learn and actually heal myself by removing pain. It will be possible only when I have gained something from that. Mm. I cannot say, okay, I have forgiven you. No, it's a, have I forgiven myself? I'm being honest, okay, it was a mistake of me of taking pain. Why should I take pain? I don't want to take sorrow, so I, do, I am determined not to take it. So in soul consciousness, then you don't allow to sit in your heart. You recognize it was insult. You recognize it was unnecessary criticism. You recognize it, it is because of jealousy of the other person and has not used the opportunity, and I have used it, and now this person wants to cause me harm. And definitely it is creating that kind of atmosphere, I might lose job, I might, might lose my uh, happiness because of another, some other danger can come. But here it is, I need to become a totally detached observer, protecting first my own inner strength. So, what I have learned from that, if I am able to remove, I mean, this is what important in soul consciousness, I love myself, protect myself, by learning I heal myself, and then not only I forgive others, because forgiving, forgiveness is the healing, healing medicine, healing heart. Not only forget, but for and not only forgive, but forget that you are forgiven. Then it's the healing. I, um, just a short story I want to say, share with you, that there was one a holy person meditating on near a water stream, and a scorpion fell in this water. This holy person, oh, scorpion, became aware and picked the scorpion to put it out. The scorpion bit him. It's natural. It is a scorpion uh, sting. So he went nearby. There were some bushes. So he took some herb with a rough stone. He pressed this place, or prepared this medicine, and put it on there. Fine. Came back and sat again. Second time it happened. Then again he put it out. Third time, same thing. People said, you are a holy man, a wise man. Why don't you kill the scorpion? He says, you know, this is my teacher. So how can be this one your teacher? Did you, did you understand, do you understand the language? He said, yes. It's not a question of speaking, it's a question of learning. Teacher, teaches, but the student learns, is called teacher, so he's my teacher. I have learned three lessons. Which three lessons you have learned, please? We didn't hear. He says, the first lesson I learned of my personality, that I am become so merciful, so loveful, that I, I know that scorpion will swim and save itself, but then it's a natural nature to help. So I am I became aware of my heart, feelings. I'm finishing in one second minute. The second, second lesson I learned, forgive those who cause you harm. Everyone is good with the good ones, be good with bad ones. And so I realized that I am merciful. I have the power to forgive. The third one is not only forgive, but forget that you are forgiven. I continue the story after this. Is, we have three minutes meditation now. <laughs> oh.
love. I let go of the hurts from the past. As yesterday is not today, is another day. It's a new beginning. I let go as I love myself. I'm open for new realizations. vision, respectful vision, for the other person, a vision of improvement of change in the other soul as well. My vision is only to see the good things which has taken place in relationships. We are living together in a garden I create a vision of myself, a spiritual rose with spirituality. I increase the gentleness, softness, sweet fragrance. which dispels the hatred, jealousy, reaction with my spirituality I transform the atmosphere and accept with one rose can be twenty thorns. I'm careful to handle the thorns and attentive to take the fragrance. Once again, I reawaken, reestablish everlasting energy of love in me, eternal relationship of soul to soul. pure being, a loving being, just let go of the past, open your heart for good wishes, create the vision of positivity and experience healing of the heart. not only healing myself but healing others also so that their guilt is gone they also 
help themselves to be free from the past. This thread of love is bringing us together like a garland, embracing the specialities of each other, threaded in the thread of love, of good wishes. self-respect. I am a loving being, giving being, forgiving. I finish the story, just one aspect more in it. That people said to him, it's okay, it's very clear to understand. Have with good wishes, create good feeling, become aware of your personality, and you can have mercy for your own protection, this is clear. If I don't forgive, I would be suffering. So I realize, for my own safety, I, I forgive. But how to forget that? Certainly we will remember that I have forgiven this. This holy man said, he says that, Okay, you, you can be, you maintain your mentality of love and respect, but the secret is that you forget that you are forgiven. There's no more ego anymore in it of forgiving, because you have removed the pain from yourself. So what was this example that I went and I took this poisonous sting out? It was not pain anymore, so I could sit comfortably again. If that pain, the sting was still there, I could not concentrate. I could not bring another quality. And so it means that reminding myself my true happiness is the eternal quality within the soul and in soul consciousness. It's up to me, I take sorrow or not, I don't want to take, so I don't want to take this determination. And if I have taken from that situation sorrow, what I have learned, so this gain of something, achievement of happiness is healing automatically because the achievement is more than the pain. Like you, you go to job, job it's it's getting up early morning, the job begins four o'clock in the morning, love is, sleep is very beautiful thing, to sleep, especially in the morning time. But because I get double job salary, I can get up and then it is forgotten that I get up so early. So it is renunciation because of the achievement. So you let go of this that I have given, this ego is gone because I have achieved something and thanks to that person that made me aware what I need to improve in myself. And with that honesty I have learned something. So this happiness heals the soul. Happiness is the best nourishment of all, is best cure of all. So then recognizing of the truth, the soul is truth. And this honesty within the self 
Is it other person given sorrow, me, that I am suffering for 10 years? It, as I was giving the example, it's true that that person was really nasty and did such kind of behavior, I trusted them and they deceived me. I gave everything. And then just like a, putting a knife in my back, really is my ache, neck ache, I can understand. And, but I always give, 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 give. Now, when I am repeating this, one it is it has been that real situation, one time, two times. How many times I have repeated that to my friend, to my mother, to my neighbor, to my children? This knife was one time too. It was cutting sharp knife, and I am using this hundred times. Who is responsible this making this wound deep? The other person or myself? It's me, isn't it? Yeah. So I am I have made it, it more and more because now I have made it true and I'm repeating it again and again. So it has become not only it is in the, my mind, now it my intellect and as well as my personality is now so sad that people want to be very merciful. Now I want love and respect in a very subtle way, because I became now victim of the person, that person helped, defamed me, deceived me, gave me so much trouble, and it is... Now other people can have mercy on me. I lost my mercy on myself, so I... People... And now in this way I want false achievement from others. So my personality became that one, because now I am... People can share my pain. So I created this. I lost my self-respect and I want respect and love from others. When I'm not soul conscious, personality is changing. And so now both things have to be healed, heart and mind, but with clear understanding and reminding myself of my true personality. What is the true personality of myself? I'm not only just a person, a human being, not only a human, I'm a being, a living energy, a pure being, a child of the Supreme Being, the Supreme Soul, a divine being. And so I need to bring three things, not only heart and mind, but I need to make my intellect divine as well, because because of ego, I took a lot of sorrow. And I gave a lot of sorrow. I created this account. I need to make my intellect divine. How to make it? Now, let me connect with the Supreme. Mind, intellect, and my personality when three are in harmony, then I'm healed. Because it's not only I, my feelings are changed, it is not my intellect is changed, but my actions are changed. My behavior is changed, first with my own self. So that takes power, doesn't it, yeah. to do that? Because we've got personalities, like you said, that have been affected by yeah. our mistakes and the hurts that we've suffered. Right. So those personalities have a certain impetus. Yes. Where do we find the power to change like that? So first practice again and again of what my true identity is and then connection with the Supreme because we are soul but disconnected with the Supreme Being. So a piece of wire has the energy but it is disconnected. The energy is not flowing anymore. So what you need to connect this wire again, this dead wire becomes live wire, acting, active again. But what is the method? You need to remove the insulation. You connect the copper with copper. So we say, oh God, give me power to forgive. Oh God, give me power to let go. God, give me power to heal. But we are not connecting 
with the Supreme Being, the Merciful Lord, the Forgiver, the Bestower of Blessings. And so to realize I, the soul, am a bodiless soul and virtuous soul in my original nature. My innate qualities are knowledge, so misunderstanding the fact of the life, of the situations, and also understanding what my original real qualities are. Knowledge. I, the soul, am a bodiless being. If other person is talking and insulting me, what is uh, what he is seeing and shouting at? Is shouting at my house, body, shouting at my car, but not seeing me, the soul, the driver. Neither I am seeing in the soul. So crap, bang, takes place. Damage car is damaged. Suffering I took. Now I realize that this person did, it didn't even know me, me as me. Wrong identification, wrong way of behavior. So I become bodyless, being in the body. True identity is pure, pure and peaceful. So I am, this practice, this, this rubbish is impurity pollution that is, I have taken here, so I need to keep the intellect clear with knowledge and also mind peaceful. So with this practice, I am a pure and peaceful soul. Walking, talking, sitting, eating, practicing. This energy then creates the vibrations and then this vibrations, when being introspective, seeing inner inspection of the qualities, your vision, this turns within, as Dadi said, become introspective. Inner inspection of enjoying the qualities, and also if something is wrong, it's not me, body is not me, it's my body. And it's my, it's, I put here in this uh, vision, in this palace, in this temple, or in this house, or in this country, in this land, what? I put an immigration here, immigration office. Not allowed something is wrong, that inspection taking place, right? Or I have the consciousness, okay, there is fire, but what am I? Fire brigade. I connect myself, so I wear this costume of fireproof dress, what is fireproof dress? Is pure consciousness. I am not only this body, in this body, I am a being of light. This practice. So this vibration brings purity, peace, love for the self. I am a pure, peaceful, loveful soul. Now this love uplifts you. This peace makes you detached and powerful. You connect yourself with the Almighty Authority. And this power of the Almighty is your power as natural power, divine power, healing power, giving power, purifying power. Let us practice this. Om. Shanti. Om. I become aware of my true self. I am an eternal being, metaphysical energy, living energy, 
expressing myself through the energy of matter, through my costume, through my instrument. Om. I realize I have taken this body to play my role I play my role on this unlimited play on this playground understanding the laws of nature the rules of the game giving is receiving love is letting go freedom for myself and freedom for others good feeling is myself and having good wishes for others let the values play the role virtues play the part i step away this consciousness of the body and focus my energy my thought connecting myself an immortal energy pure energy i am child of the supreme being the supreme soul ocean of love an ocean of peace the best tour forgiver the purifier ocean of love pure love selfless love of the supreme mother the supreme soul is washing away all the negative influences accepting me as i am and i also accept myself as i am and accept others also my supreme beloved mother the ocean of love heals me with pure heart unconditional love let this love stay in me
become aware of my self-respect. Truth and bliss. I, a soul, am child of the benevolent being, the beautiful one, the blissful one of Satyam Shivam Sundaram, ever beautiful, ever pure. Ever benevolent, merciful one. I acquired the qualities inherent power as an inheritance. A blissful soul with an happy heart, pure mind, divine personality, harmonious being. I share the vibrations of love and harmony with my brothers and sisters. Let the matter also be pure, clean, healed. Healing vibrations heal the elements. And I breathe in inner health. Whole healthy. Let everything be whole healthy. Holy, pure, clean. As I breathe in, I breathe in happiness, bliss. As I breathe out, I vibrate bliss, peace, and love. Thank you for the harvest. So beautiful, so beautiful.